Church here. Over a year ago, our country decided to change the leadership. They decided to relieve the captain and crew of their command. But what this new captain and crew got was a ship that was battered and bruised, damage on, from port to stern, holes gaping on every side, a rudder, rudder broken, a flooded engine, and they said, good luck. <laughs> this president has tried over the last 14 months, or excuse me, over the last 12 months, to just keep this ship afloat. That's how bad it was. And it took, and it took unprecedented decisions to do that. But they had to be made just to keep us from sinking. He has made those, and the Congress has made those. And today, 12 months later, we're sitting here, and we are still afloat. But it's time to not just float out in the deep sea. It's time to get us in the dry dock and make the necessary repairs. And those repairs are going to take some difficult decisions, and they're going to take a lot of teamwork. There's two candidates in this race. I know them both. Both smart and both articulate. But there's only one candidate that is going to go down to Washington, roll up her sleeves, and join with the president in making those repairs. If we send Martha Coakley down to Washington, you can best believe we'll have a voice that will strike the term working poor from the American vocabulary. That will take the term perpetually unemployed and turn it to full employment. And lastly, everybody's talking about the descent of American prosperity. Well, it's time we send people like Martha down that'll stop talking about how bad things are and start making doing the necessary work to make them good so that we can revive the American dream. <laughs> this, this election in Massachusetts is so important. That's why you have everybody throughout this country and quite frankly, throughout the world, focused on what's going to happen here on Tuesday because so many things hang, hang in the balance. We can make sure from here on in by electing Martha Coakley that that new leadership that I talked about is going to be able to make the repairs to the damage that was caused by the prior leadership and I'll go back and say it's easy to sit on the sidelines and criticize but it's hypocritical to sit on the sidelines and criticize the people that are cleaning up your mess. Ladies and gentlemen, Martha Coakley. We're on the verge of making history in so many ways. One, we have the opportunity to send the first woman from Massachusetts to the United States Senate ever in its history. That is history in itself. But more importantly is what she will do there because we are at a crossroads. Thank you all very much. I want to say hi to my friend Sam Bolton who's joined us. I know he's from Chelmsford but we let him come to Lowell, right? <laughs> and, and you know, uh, there is a lot to like about Lowell, isn't there? Yes. yes! We love Lowell. I'm delighted to be here tonight with all this enthusiasm. And you have to tell me, Steve, are you thinking about buying a boat or moving to Newburyport? <laughs> I thought Lowell was landlocked except for the... But, Thank you. The, the, we got the canals, that's right. Um, Steve is so right about that image, and I want you to keep that in mind, but I want to tell you a quick story first, and I want to thank everybody behind me, Sue and Ellen and Therese and Nikki and Steve and Charlie and Bud and Rita and Jim, Mr. <laughs> Mayor, I can't go wrong if I call you Mr. Mayor and Jim, for your support, and for your support, because you're the ones who are going to make this happen on January 19th. I know that. I know that from today and I know that from tonight. And let me tell you why it's going to happen. 
It's about four weeks ago, and Scott Brown was walking through Rentham, and he ran into a little girl who had a box of brand new kittens. And the little girl said to Scott, Oh, Mr. Brown, see my new kittens? They're all Republicans. And he said, that's very good, that's great. And he went on his way, got into his truck, and went someplace. And then about four weeks later, probably Monday of this week, Scott brought his family and everybody by, and the little girl was there with all the kittens. And she said, you know, hi, Susie, can you tell my family about the kittens? And she said, oh, yes, Mr. Brown, these are all my kittens, and they're all Democrats. <laughs> and he was puzzled, and he said, wait a minute, I thought you told me they were all Republicans. And she said, yes, Mr. Brown, but now they can open their eyes. <laughs> we cannot be complacent and that we will not let a Republican who stands for everything that got us into this mess in the first place, as Steve so well told us, and pretends that by doing the same thing we'll right that ship. He's totally wrong and I think we've maybe been complacent because we didn't think anybody would buy a story like that. But for some reason, short race, holiday season, people think it's a given, He's gotten some traction, but I can tell you that the traction has stopped, and Democrats have opened their eyes, and I know we are going to turn out the vote to make sure that we send somebody to Washington who will continue the tremendous work of Ted Kennedy. I know I'm not Ted Kennedy. Nobody is, and everybody in this room knows what he, went to Ma that what he meant to Massachusetts and to places like Lowell, the kind of work he did. But we are certainly not sending Scott Brown down in that seat. And we need to work on Tuesday to make sure we don't. Let me tell you what this race is about. It is about defining the clear differences between what Scott Brown stands for and what he means and what I stand for and who I stand up for. And let me just tell you, yesterday in the Wall Street Journal, they reported that J.P. Morgan Chase is showing $3.3 billion in profit this year. And they are deciding whether their bonuses should be seven figures or eight figures. And when President Obama said, hey, wait a minute, you were saved, and this country was saved because taxpayer money was used to bail you out. And now you're sitting on reserves and using that money to pay bonuses. We taxpayers want our money back. I agree with President Obama, and I bet you do too. Yeah. So we should get that money back. Scott Brown says, well, that's okay. Uh, we'll let them keep that money. And he's the one who says he protects taxpayers. I'm an attorney general who spent the last three years bringing back a billion dollars to the Commonwealth in saved utility rates consumer fraud cases, making sure that we kept people in their homes, going after Goldman Sachs to get money for their role in predatory lending and securitization, and making sure that I protected for consumers and for taxpayers and for the Commonwealth what was important. That's what we need is someone who's going to understand how complicated these problems are and they need tough solutions. And I am going to fight every day for you and with you to make sure that happens. He's not going to do that, so make no mistake about where he stands. Voters need to know, and Democrats are opening their eyes this week about where I stand and who I'm going to fight for. And let me tell you who I'm going to fight for. Jim from Arlington, father of four. He's out of work. He's got health insurance this year because he worked for four or five months last year in the construction industry. But what he's worried about is next year, because if he doesn't get about four or five months of work, he's going to have no health care. He's not going to have any insurance. He's got four kids. Two are in college, one's a sophomore in high school, and he's very proud, as am I, and I knew you are, of his son who went to military academy and is protecting us by serving over in Afghanistan now. His wife is a nurse in Winchester, but she works for DM, so she doesn't have insurance. She also has breast cancer, and she had surgery and chemotherapy and radiation, and she's probably going to be okay. But she's got five years of very expensive prescriptions that they may not be able to afford. Never mind everything else, paying for their mortgage and their kids. And you know what? That story's not unique. That's been repeated time and time again across this commonwealth and this country. 
And Scott Brown has the audacity to say that Wall Street doesn't need to pay back taxpayer money while Main Street and Jim still suffer. I think that's wrong. You know it's wrong. And we're going to show everybody on Tuesday the 19th that we're going to send somebody to Washington who's going to fight to show that it's wrong. And I need your help to do that. just too much at stake. It's the economy and we'll do that and get it turned around and get people back to work and get jobs and growth, particularly up here. You've done such a great job in Lowell. I know because I started in the district court back here in 1986 and I seen, I've seen what the community has been able to do by pitching in with the private sector and the public sector with the help of President Clinton putting a lot of police on the streets and making a big difference up here. President Clinton, by the way, who left his presidency with no deficit Right? We had a surplus. Guess where that went? And then we have a government that comes in and refuses to check the abuses on Wall Street and big government. And as Steve said so well, has the audacity to claim that we haven't done a good job cleaning up that messes. And by the way, claiming that the solution is more of the same. Well, we're going to say no to that on Tuesday. And I know you're going to be there with me to do it because it's too important. Call 10 people this weekend and make sure they get out to vote. As long as they're voting for me, of course. <laughs> make sure that you vote. Make sure that your families vote. Because when we do this, we are going to win. And when somebody says to you, well, they might want to vote for Scott Brown, or they're thinking about Scott Brown, you should say to them this. Just because you're driving a truck around Massachusetts doesn't mean you're going in the right direction. <laughs> vote for someone who's going to roll up her sleeves and go down to Washington and get this country back on track, work with President Obama, who by the way is coming here tomorrow because he wants to make sure that he doesn't have a roadblock in the Senate, but he has someone who will work with him on solutions. And I'm so proud to have him come here where he's come to MIT and said we can be the pioneers in new energy, turning jobs around. We have the innovation, the hard work, the educational institutions across this commonwealth to turn it around, and we will, and your help on Tuesday will do it. So let's go out on January 19th and let's celebrate. Thank you. they should get energized to vote for me because we know that people support progress. We just got to make sure they know they've got to vote for me on, on uh, Tuesday. And so I think he will energize Massachusetts. I'm delighted to have his support. We're really looking forward to a great afternoon tomorrow. You made mention of it in your speech today, sort of how it's time for Democrats to open their eyes. Do you think this is sort of a Browns has been the first is sort of a sneak it kind of came up unexpectedly? You know, in a short race like this, over a time period when four major holidays, Hanukkah, Christmas, New Year, I think voters haven't been paying attention. That's not their fault. This is a very different kind of race. We've never had a special election statewide in such a short period of time. And so I think that although people may have been interested in some of the things they said, on further reflection, I think they recognize Scott Brown's not what they wanted a senator. And I'm asking for their vote on January 19th. Final question. Are you disappointed with the way the race has gone and, and you're really pushing people to come out here and vote? Are you disappointed the way things have gone so far? Or are you Absolutely not. Confident now? Every, every um, campaign has its own um, pace and dynamic. Um, a lot of people complain the primary was pretty dull. We ran a very, you know, positive campaign. Um, we won by a lot more than people thought we were. Or we, would. we know the polls aren't accurate. We don't know what's going to happen on January 19th. I am delighted that people are now energized and excited about this race. This is what this country is about, having choices. We just want to make sure people know what the choices are. Finally, what you got coming up, Sunday and Monday, what are your plans? Well, tomorrow, we're, go we're doing some Martin Luther King breakfast and re receptions tomorrow and Monday. Um, we're going down to the Cape in the morning. We're going to be back here for President Obama. And on Monday, after Martin Luther King,
Luther King breakfast in Boston, we're headed out all the way to Pittsfield. So we're not leaving any votes unturned in the Commonwealth.